Hello, welcome to Book Talk. I'm your host, Anthony Moerore. At Book Talk, we get to have an author come and tell us about their book. And today, we have a great guest with us. And we are going to tackle a great topic, something that uh, we've been hearing for ages and ages, but we can never, or we've never been able to exhaust this topic. And I know that uh, our guest today is going to dive us deeper into the topic and maybe help us see a light at the end of the tunnel. And I'm not going to take one more minute. I'm not even going to mention what we are going to talk about because the author is going to tell us. So welcome to the show, Stephen Horn. Hi. Well, thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's an honor to have you here. And uh, we are very, very glad and honored to have you here because we are going to talk something to do with freedom. And uh, right. yeah, but before we get into that, we would like to know who is Stephen? Oh, I'm a, uh, I'm a professional herbalist and uh, natural health uh, teacher. I, I teach people, I've been teaching people about herbs, nutritional supplements, alternative uh, healing for 40 years. And I've written a number of books on, on that topic. But of course, one of the things that comes up when you're uh, teaching people about something that is a little not mainstream is you run into all of the legal stuff that goes on with you know FDA and, and all these government agencies and all the medical licensing laws and all of the things that you have to tiptoe around you know mm -hmm. uh, to, to kind of uh, not be illegal. And so in the 1980s, I also became very interested in freedom and okay. in you know what and the what the the founding principles of America and the more I learned about it the more I realized we don't get taught this stuff and I think the fact that we don't even get taught this stuff anymore means that most people don't really understand the the principles that I think guided what made this country what it is and I think we're losing them because because people don't understand them and mm -hmm. at least it's nice to talk about them so that we can uh, even if we disagree you know, at least, you know, if you understand something, you can disagree with it rationally instead of disagreeing with it just, you know, yeah, sure. and and emotionally. Right. Uh -huh. You know, and, and then and then reason whether whether what, what is really a valid way to look at that. And so uh, I actually in some ways what it would call this sound moral reasoning. Uh, that was a book I thought of writing uh, because the, the real issue here is about morality mm -hmm. and um and, and that's why the t subtitle of the book is The, the Moral Foundations of a Free Society. Mm. Beautiful. So the book we are talking about, for those who may be joining us right now, is known as Let Freedom Ring by Stephen Horn. And uh, yeah. we are going to, I mean, it's good that you mentioned uh, about uh, the founding principles of our, and not only America, we, all the founding principles of many countries when, when they, they are coming up, when they are gaining the freedom, they, are, they, they mention things they are going to stand by, but then they, they don't stick to them. I mean, there's, there's so much that goes on into that. And so we need the, this talk that like we are having today. So um, when was this book written just to uh, have a, an idea? Well, actually, I started writing it about 10 years ago, <laughs> and I <laughs> finished it up last, last year. Uh, and I, I did when I started to look at the, uh, the, what was going on in the country, mm -hmm. uh, because um, I went to uh, mainland China in 1986. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so I was in the middle of a, a very deeply communist country for three and a half weeks. And I actually came back to the United States on the 4th of July. I ended I, I'd been becoming familiar with uh, the principles of American government. And I tell you, I, the idea of wanting to kiss the ground when you got to the place well, it was the way I felt when I arrived home. And it was especially interesting that I arrived home on the 4th of July. But one of the things that I realized is that what keeps us free is our belief in freedom. Mm -hmm. Okay. That in other words, if, if we universally hold to certain principles, like we believe in free speech in this country, yeah. then, then, the government is going to have our time taking away our free speech because all of us will resist that. We will, mm -hmm. you know, fight mm -hmm. back. Blah, blah. And I, and there were principles that I thought we're never going to give up, you know, yeah. like, like free speech and stuff. And then I started to see those under what I considered assault. Like, 
you know, not, not, and I, and that, that's when I began to get scared for what's going to go on with this country because I realized if people stop believing in these things, mm -hmm. they'll lose them, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I, I, I'm of the thing, you know, like I think people, you know, debate is a good thing, you know, uh, uh, you know, being able to bring ideas out in the open and argue them and, and let people hear both sides and make up their minds is a good thing. And there are people, you know, right now who don't think that's a good thing, who think we should, you know, certain pe people shouldn't be allowed to talk because their ideas are dangerous. But, but mm -hmm. if you look at what happens in the world when you do things like that, mm -hmm. it doesn't turn out well. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I think it's a I think it's a good thing to bring up debate because um, there are many things that uh, maybe I mean like this. Someone once told me, uh, common sense is not so common. I mean, no, it's not. <laughs> so I may be you may be thinking that what you know I also know, and you may be thinking that what the principles that should be followed everyone knows about them. So it's always good right. to come uh, on a platform like this and debate about issues. And uh, we can have a new or uh, a different perspective from the one that we have, which should be, and which I pray is a better perspective from what I know. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. the, the, the foundational idea here is actually mm -hmm. in the Declaration of Independence. Yeah. Uh, that we hold these truths to be self-evident that all, and we'd say in, in modern language, all people are mm -hmm. created equal. Yeah. Uh, but, but here's the thing. That's not a self-evident idea. That yeah. had not been a self-evident idea in the world. I mm -hmm. mean, the idea of authoritarian, that certain people had the right to rule over other people and certain people had the right to dictate to other people what they should believe and what they should think, was, mm -hmm. the, was the commonplace norm. But, but they were saying, if you reason it out, we're all equal. All of us are equal. And we yeah. all have, endowed by our creator, the same inalienable rights, life, mm -hmm. liberty, pursuit of happiness, th that was also understood as life, liberty, and property back then. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the word inalienable means it can't be made alien to you. And, and people think that that means, you know, nobody can take it away. Well, somebody can try to kill you, even though you have a right to life. Somebody can mm -hmm. try to steal your property, even though you have a right to property. It's actually that nobody has the, morally has the right to do that. Yeah, that 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 right cannot be made alien to you morally. No one should have the right to take away your life, your liberty, or your property mm -hmm. with without. Um, well, and then and the exception to that, I'll I'll, I'll talk about in a minute. That, but but everybody, if everybody's life, liberty, and property is protected, you know, we all are equal and we're all free, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But. But that's not been the norm through history. And I, and I like to say that's the founding idea of America. Yeah. But we've never fully lived up to it. Like, mm -hmm. but, but that's true for all of us. You know, we all have ideals and we don't always live up to our ideals. Yeah. But you don't abandon the ideal just because, because you've had problems with living up to it. Mm -hmm. The ideal is still, is still good. And if you think about morally, Nobody wants to have their body damaged or destroyed, right? Yeah. Nobody yes. wants to have their, their property vandalized, stolen from, etc. Nobody wants to be enslaved. Nobody wants to be forced to do things too. We all inherently know inside of ourselves mm -hmm. when someone does that to us, it's wrong. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So by a principle that's a universal principle in all religions, the golden rule, we should recognize, well, then it would be wrong for me to do that to someone else. If it's mm -hmm. wrong for them to do it to me, it's wrong for me to do it to them. Yeah, that's sure. The, that's the foundational, self-evident idea this country was founded on. Mm -hmm. And that, and what, what it goes on to that is that the role of government is to protect that. That is the purpose of government, is, yeah, is sure. to protect your life, liberty, and property. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, under many uh, different government systems, that hasn't been the case. Mm -hmm. your, your life, liberty, and property were in grave danger by government, <laughs> not, not by... Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, even, even in some cases, you know, like we know that in the history of the United States, there's been issues with some of these things. And mm -hmm. uh, obviously, slavery was the big one. There, there were a lot of the founding fathers that knew slavery was wrong. 
but in order to win the Revolutionary War, they compromised and said, okay, we'll allow slavery and we'll deal with it later. Well, they did deal with it later with a bloody war, but, but the fact is, is that, is that it's, it was a violation of that principle, right? Yeah, sure, sure. And, and they knew yeah. it was a violation of the principle. Same thing with, with women's rights, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, so it's an ideal we've been working for, and I don't think we should abandon it, you know? Yeah, sure. And then now comes Let Freedom Ring. Now, this title, I, it's famous with a, um, a famous uh, Martin Luther speech. Uh, is that where you picked it up from or where? Well, where I, it? I don't know where I picked it up from, but I just, it, 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 it goes back to, uh, actually, it goes back to the Liberty Bell, you know, has a thing on it from the Bible, you know, mm. let, let, you know, uh, about freedom, you know, being proclaimed throughout the whole land. So yeah. the idea of let freedom ring. Mm. Uh, and I know it's a, a phrase, and but uh, so I didn't know where it came from, but I always liked it. <laughs> yeah, but I believe uh, even Martin Luther King took it from the Bible. And I mean, yes, yeah, he, he had so. a lot of uh, reference to the Bible in his speech. And uh, then we go, we are going to go a bit deeper into your book because we are going to touch on a, a few of the chapters that you've uh, written there. And uh, something that maybe you've just touched on is that uh, uh, what your title of the book, of the first chapter of the book is, Liberty is in, is in Danger. And I believe it's in danger because some, we've forgotten or we've assumed some of the principles. Uh, is that basically what you want to mean in that chapter? Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you know, when, um, when I was in uh, communist China, okay, mm -hmm. Uh, they talked about their liberty celebration being freed from the, you know, uh, 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 rule of the empire emperor, you know, and they had a three day celebration with fireworks and picnics and all the things that we do here. And, uh, and, you know, the, and I thought we were in a country that I didn't think was very free, you know, yeah. but they were, they were celebrating their freedom. And when I went to Tibet, Tibet was under, you know, uh, Chinese occupation. There were guys with machine guns, on, on the bridges and all of that sort of thing. And there was mm -hmm. actually an uprising the year after I, uh, I had been there. And I had dinner with the governor of Tibet. And yeah. you know what scared me? Mm -hmm. He seemed like any politician I'd ever met. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Yeah. And, th and that's when I realized that, that you know, politicians don't keep you free. Mm -hmm. you no, know, pol politicians take power and they do what they think is right for you and what inhibits them is the people we mm -hmm. the people it's, it's we we the people collectively and our our beliefs in our freedom and our rights and everything that keeps politicians in check and i realized if we ever lost those beliefs we were yeah. doomed mm -hmm. and that's why i say it's in danger is because there are people who are saying okay we shouldn't allow these people to speak because they're they're hateful or whatever and or, or, or we shouldn't, um, you know, or, or certain religions are dangerous or blah, 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 and all these things that are going around now. Um, and, and the big thing was the, like the lockdowns with COVID-19. Mm -hmm. All these big companies got to stay open and all these small companies got shut down, right? And those small companies, a lot of them went out of business. And, and, mm -hmm. and what, what was a big violation there for me is, is it wasn't a law. Laws are passed in the United States by legislatures yeah. who are representatives of the people, not by mm -hmm. executive order. Mm -hmm. Executive orders are not laws because the executive branch executes the law. They don't make the law. And okay. we had executive branches in every state of the country making law, uh -huh. right? <laughs> by ordering businesses shut down, ordering blah, 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 without, without what? Without any legislature passing any laws. Mm. That's dangerous. Yeah, you understand? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Because that's allowing people in the executive branch to take dictatorial powers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And the yeah. whole idea the founding fathers knew is that that tended to happen. So they split up the power both vertically and horizontally to try to keep anybody from having too much power. Mm -hmm. So that so that you could av avoid the ever encroaching government coming and taking more and more authority over your life. And we're yeah. in that position where it just feels like the government's 
and a lot of time I've been alive has just taken more and more control over all these minutia things of our lives, and that's not freedom. And I, I think I think it's it's not even getting any better. I mean, once we get uh, monitored from every corner of the <laughs> right, there we go. You know, I mean, it's not getting easier. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. And unless we unless we collectively, you know, re-embrace the idea of freedom and mm -hmm. start, you know, resisting and fighting back and whatever, we're not. Our freedom was won by people who over, from uh, you know, through the the Protestant Reformation, like with Martin Luther and so forth. Pe people, you know, rebelled against the church. They rebelled against uh, the government. Started, you know, resisting the the tyranny and hundreds of thousands of people were burned at stake, died, blah, 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 all to advance this idea. And if we lose it, that's going to happen all over again mm -hmm. because it's very hard to regain once you've lost it. And so mm -hmm. at some point you have to dig in your heels and say, okay, no more. You know, you've gone far enough. This is going too far. You're taking too much authority over our personal lives. Mm -hmm. and you shouldn't have a right to. And if we don't do that, then we'll be back to a dictatorship. And that that scares me, not so much for me. I'm uh, 68, you know, yeah. my, my, but I, it scares me for my children and grandchildren and the people, generations who are going to fall under because they won't have the freedom that I had when I was growing up. Yeah, because we, all, we should always uh, think uh, forward. We should always think of the coming generations. What impact are we going to have that is going to give them the freedom that they, they should be enjoying? What, what, what can we do today to make their prosperity uh, tomorrow protected and yeah. uh, sure? Yes, that, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, if you don't mind, I, I want to explain this in, in terms of the concept of crime, okay? Yeah. Because Please do. Uh, I, um, I read this definition of crime, which I understand. I've, I haven't been able to research and find out where the guy got the original quote that I, that I learned it from. Mm -hmm. But crime is a deliberate and willful trespass against the life, liberty, or property of another yeah. in which there is a demonstrable loss of life, liberty, or property. Now, if you take that definition of crime, mm -hmm. all of us can understand that. You know, that, that's stealing, vandalizing, destroying someone's property, taking away someone's liberty, harming them you know, physically or taking their life. And we all understand that. That's called common law. Yeah. It's the law that's common to all people. Okay. Mm -hmm. So America is based on common law. That is the idea that that um, that is what crime is. So mm -hmm. in in what's called ruler's law, and it doesn't matter whether the ruler is a dictator or, or a, an oligarchy, a group of people or a, or a religious thing. Mm -hmm. they, they make the rules and they tell you what's a crime or what's not a crime. Yeah. Under a common law government, crime is already defined as we understand that we don't want to be trespassed against. Mm -hmm. So once you depart from the common law thing of, of definition of crime, you, you, you open the door for anything, <laughs> right? Yeah. Everything we can... But, but under the idea of this is that if I trespass against someone else's rights, it's like I'm saying, I don't believe you have this right. And mm -hmm. therefore, society can say, well, then you don't have it either, right? Yeah. So we can, we can make you pay back what you stole. We can take your property and give it back to the person you stole from. Or mm -hmm. we can do something to you to make it right with the person. And that's something that was missing, that I talk about in the book, was missing from the founding of America is that a true common law system um, is based on restitution. Okay. It's not based on the government punishing you. It's based mm -hmm. on the government forcing you to make it right with the victim of who you trespassed against. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now we get and it. that makes a whole lot more sense to me because it's saying, you know, you stole from someone, you should have to make restitution to them for it. Okay. And under under the biblical common law system, you had to pay back two to seven times what you stole. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the reason it has to be at least double is because if you just return what was stolen, you're giving back what was never yours in the first place. Yeah. If you pay back twice as much, 
you're not only giving back what you stole, you're suffering a loss equal to the loss that you inflicted on the other. Mm -hmm. Understand? So yeah. justice, justice has been served. Mm -hmm. Justice isn't some arbitrary thing where a king or a ruler or a government decides that, that something is wrong and then punishes you for it. Yeah. Justice is restoring the scales of equality. And that's part okay. of the moral principle that I think we're, we're missing is understanding what the, the real nature of justice is. Mm -hmm. A lot of what is done is unjust mm -hmm. in government. You know, I think it's very unjust for someone to, to serve a five or six year prison sentence for having a little bit of marijuana uh -huh. <laughs> okay, okay. The, the, the punishment doesn't fit the crime does it yeah it doesn't it, it doesn't does. uh -huh. and 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 the the punishment should should be not a punishment but it should be something that makes helps make things right and yeah. I, I i had to start adopting these principles with my own family right with my mm -hmm. kids mm -hmm. rather than punishing them you get them to do something to fix the problem. Mm, okay. It's a whole lot better way to deal with each other mm -hmm. is to teach us to be responsible towards one another than it is to, you know, oh, we're going to reward you if you do good and punish you if you do evil. It's we're going to teach us. We all got, we all got to play fair, right? Yeah, sure. And then you talk about the law of the harvest. Can you give us a, yeah, a well, that's something I think is very important. And I, I, I really opened up to this when I read Emerson's essay on compensation, mm -hmm. where he basically argues that the, the law of the harvest is impossible to escape. It's as impossible to escape as the law of gravity. The energy you put out will come back to you. Mm -hmm. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Every, every, there's ebb and flow in everything. And he, he maintains that it's impossible to do harm without suffering harm. Mm -hmm. He says, the, the minute I trespass against my neighbor, we're no longer equal. Yeah. They're, 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 he doesn't like me anymore. And I'm, a, and I'm a little bit of afraid and nervous because I know what I've done is wrong inside, mm -hmm. inside my soul. Mm -hmm. So he says the, the retribution is instant. And, and so I, I firmly believe in my, my life that the energy we put out, you know, in, to other people comes back to us. Yeah. So if, if, the, the idea of justice I'm talking about, a restitution, is in perfect harmony with the law of the harvest. Understand? Mm -hmm. it, it's working in harmony with the way things actually work in the universe. Okay. You know? Yeah. And then, but, yeah. Yeah. And, 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 but, it, but, if, but it also goes the other way. He says, every good thing I do will eventually come back to me. So mm. he says, do all the good you can because it will eventually be repaid. And, and that's where I was going because you have a chapter on doing good. That's chapter 11 in your book. Yes. Yes. It is. Yeah. And I, I thought, well, if you can define evil as a deliberate, willful trespass against life, liberty, property, and another, mm -hmm. let's define good as the opposite. A, a willing and voluntary sacrifice of my own life, liberty, or property for the benefit of another. And if you think about it, we all, when, when we look at something heroic, right? Mm -hmm. That's who we see as heroic, is people who voluntarily, without being compelled, do something with mm -hmm. their own life, their own liberty, their own money, property, whatever, to help other people. Mm. Right? Like, yeah. Like those who have sent, uh, spent years in prison for the sake of the country. In, right in or or people who who die rescuing other people right yeah Def or defending other people or or, mm -hmm. or people who who spend you know hours and hours of their time helping other people without pay right mm -hmm. yeah so a lot of people think they're good because they don't commit trespasses mm -hmm. <laughs> well, well the absence of evil isn't necessarily the presence of good uh, and if you want to do good in the world then mm -hmm. and and what i argue in the book is if we are all doing good we wouldn't need most of what government does uh -huh. right uh -huh. we'd be ta we'd be taking care of each other in love yeah not, I agree. not being compelled to do to, to do things, not to have some giant bureaucracy taking mm. our money and trying to do good with it. We'd be doing good for each other. In other and, words, if, if we keep the law, there will be no need of law keepers. Yes, exactly. 
<laughs> well, I, I remember uh, uh, Utah Phillips, a uh, 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 folk singer, in telling this story about Ammon Hennessy. He said it was a one, one man uh, Catholic anarchist revolution uh, who ran a homeless shelter. He, he, he got arrested several times for doing things that the city didn't like. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and he, his argument for the judge was, judge, your laws, what good do they do? Good people don't need them and bad people don't obey them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but that that is the thing. That's why I think that the that helping people learn to be moral is the real thing that will fix the country. Not mm -hmm. not not in the political thing of what we're going to argue and try to force each other to do and use government to, you know, try to fix everything for us because everything can't be fixed by force. Yeah. I agree. There, you know, in a family, if all you use is force, you're going to either have children who are rebellious or they're going to be children who are just submissive little robots. You, most of what you need to do in a family is through love. Mm, I through, agree. Through that. Helping, helping your children learn to be good, moral people, to cooperate with each other. And, and so if you, there's some need sometimes for force. Mm-hmm. But the force that we really need to change society is love. And if mm. all of us who want to see society change go out and voluntarily start doing things to better the community, we'll change yeah. society. So the, the, the major, the, the main feeling in the home should be that of love. When I go into that, uh, I mean, I, I am with my parents or the kid is with, I mean, uh, the parents are with their children. They should feel that feeling of love and uh, doing things to help one another, not to force one another to do them. Right, exactly. And mm -hmm. and if you take, you know, um, I don't know if you ever watched uh, Mythbusters, uh, the, the TV show Mythbusters. No. Uh, well, anyway, they would always do uh, their little experiment they were going to do on a small scale mm -hmm. before they tried to do it on a large scale. Okay. Well, to me, if it doesn't work in a family, it's not going to work in society. And that's logical. That's like, yeah, if it doesn't work on a small scale, it's not going to work on a large scale. Sure. And, and so if if in a family you have a parent who's just a dictator, mm -hmm. okay, who's arbitrarily making ru ru rules and dishing out rewards and punishments to, to the children, what you wind up with is this resentment, chaos, this division that comes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Sure. Yeah. And that's, and, and that's what we're seeing in society because as soon as you start applying excess force, and everybody wants to start forcing each other to do things through government, you wind up with the, the kind of division and polarity that we're experiencing in the country now. It's going, to, it's only to, going to end up in chaos. Yes, it is. It will yeah. only end up in chaos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for those who are joining us right now, we are talking about the book Let Freedom Ring by Stephen Horn. And uh, it's been a great conversation. And uh, for those who started with us can agree that, yes, we need these discussions to give us a different perspective or remind us of things we might have forgotten along the way. And uh, we've covered quite a bit of the book uh, mentioning here and there, and we recommend you to go and get the book. And uh, where can they get the book if they want? Uh, they could get it at Amazon or Barnes and Noble. Um, yeah. It's available both places, so. Yes, and uh, those who want to connect with you, um, they can go to my website, stephenhorn.com, Stephen with a V, uh, Horn, H-O-R-N-E, dot com. Mm -hmm. It's mostly about natural health, you know, so, but they can sign up for my newsletter and get the articles on herbs and things that I, I teach about. Uh, but mm -hmm. also they can join my mailing list and learn about classes and stuff that I'm offering. Okay. Yeah, that's good. So if you want to connect with Stephen Horn, go to www.stephenhorn.com. And uh, yeah, you'll get much more than just freedom. You'll get health. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's his passion. And yes. uh, in chapter number 13, you talk about the fraud of trading debt as money. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, you know, one of the things that I dislike is, is the, the people are, are uh, fixing the blame mm -hmm. for our economic problems in the, in the wrong place. OK, and I don't like the idea of of capitalism and the free market being made the same thing because they're not. OK, Cap 
capitalism is, is, is related to our current banking and credit system. Mm -hmm. Free market means we can freely exchange goods and services, all right? Mm -hmm. but, but the capital system is, is based on a, uh, a fraudulent thing where we create money out of thin air. And, mm -hmm. and it, it's, it started with uh, people put their gold or silver coins in the bank and they were given notes yeah. that said, it, this, this bank will pay to the bearer on demand $1 gold or $1 silver understand okay. so so the no, a note is a promise to pay so it was a re receipt okay and yeah. you could take the note back to the bank and, and get out your gold or silver mm -hmm. so you you trade the notes right so people mm -hmm. because it's more convenient to trade the notes than it is to trade the the gold right. or silver okay mm -hmm. so banks would issue loans leveraging the gold or silver in their bank mm -hmm. and and traditionally banks would issue about 10 to 12 times more notes than they had gold or silver to redeem. Okay. So they were creating money out of thin air. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. capitalism. Mm -hmm. Capitalism. So basically they're inflating the money supply. Yeah. So now you have, you have 10 people who have a note that says the bank's going to pay them a gold coin if they take it in there mm -hmm. and none of them can get it. So there, you get a run on the bank, right? And the whole bubble collapses. Mm -hmm. So, so they, they, they went further, and when they detached that from gold or silver, mm -hmm. so they could just create this medium of exchange out of thin air. I mean, I, I love to say this. Okay, how would you like it if you could take your $100 and loan it to 10 people at 5% interest? So the same $100 yeah. loaned to 10. Now you have $1,000, and you're, getting, you're charging interest to get it. <laughs> that that we all recognize that's fraud. Yeah. Well, why come we don't recognize that's fraud? When, and and as I explained in the book, when you inflate the money supply, the price of everything goes up. Mm -hmm. Because because we don't want money, we want goods and services money can buy. Exactly. So when there's more money to bid on the goods and services, the prices of everything go up. Mm -hmm. With it's the mixed, increased mixed money logic. supply. Mix logic. Yeah. And, and so the, the problem that would fix society is if we, number one, stopped inhibiting people from, you know, exchanging goods and services. Like my wife cuts hair. You know, yeah. she cuts my hair. She's, mm -hmm. She learned how to cut hair years ago. She cuts all of our hair in the family. She's really good at it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, she's got to pay. She's from Ukraine. And, uh, and, and she's thinking of, you know, becoming hairdresser now. Okay. And, and so she's going to have to, you know, pay out the tuition and then she's going to have to take a government test and everything to cut people's hair. Why? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is it inherently dangerous to cut people's hair? <laughs> it's not. It's not. Okay, mm -hmm. so why, why do we have, it have all these things that inhibit people from trading goods and services, number one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And second thing is, if you don't have an honest money supply, how can you, and, and, and somebody's raking in money off of every transaction that you how mm -hmm. do you have an how do you have an honest free trade system? It's it, 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 the 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 problem is the corruption yeah. of the monetary system. Mm -hmm. That's that's why people get poor because as and I was also explained in the book when you get money what do you do with it? You buy goods and services. You spend, you spend it. it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you hand money to people who are not providing goods and services. Who winds up getting the money? The people, people producing goods and services. Yeah. So the money always flows towards the people who have the goods and services. Goods and services. So why do you think so many rich people are perfectly fine with the idea of government handouts? Because the money is going to come back to them anyway. Uh huh. Oh. You, 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 you take a whole bunch of money, you, you inflate the money supply, you give it to the, the, all these people, and then they give it back to the people who are producing goods and services. And, it comes and they, get, they get poorer and you get richer. And if you read it, I, I explain it in my book. It's, it's, it's perfectly logical. But like you said, common sense is not something that most people have anymore. Yeah. But if you start to understand how money works and you understand that if you want to make money, you produce goods and services. 
Mm. So is this what leads us into the root of all evil, which is a chapter in your book? <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. Well, because because if you um, the the love of money is the root of all evil. Yeah. So as one of my favorite success teachers, uh, Bob Proctor says, we should love people and use money mm, not instead use of loving money. money and using people. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. Money is there. But all, all money is, is a medium of exchange. Mm -hmm. It's something to make exchange easier because if we're just bartering, you may be producing something I want, but I'm not producing something you want. Mm -hmm. So I have an intermediary exchange that I can give you the money, you know, and then you can go get what you want from somebody else. Mm -hmm. But, but if you, if you don't have an honest money system, then, then that exchange doesn't work very well. Mm. And so th when, when people are loving money and they think that money is going to solve their problems, I think, I think it's um, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. People, he says people think having money will solve their money problems. Yeah. It doesn't because if you get money, okay, without producing goods and services, mm -hmm. okay, it doesn't benefit you. Yeah. It's an illusion. Is, is it, okay. Okay. You, mm -hmm. in or, you have to give something in order to get something. So that goes back to Emerson's essay on compensation. If I get something without giving something, I owe the universe a debt and I have to pay it back with interest. In that case, you get compensated for the value that you bring into the marketplace. Exactly. So, yeah. Right. So, yeah. Thank you. You, know, yeah. you understand that because yeah. a lot of people don't understand that. They think that if I have money, but like I say in the book, what if 100% of the people have money and nobody's producing any goods and services? Is anybody rich? No, because money won't do you any good if yeah. there's not goods and services to trade it for. But mm -hmm. if you have 100% of the people in a, in, in a community producing valuable goods and services and there's very little money, Mm -hmm. Everybody will be rich. Yeah, money is not the issue. Goods and services are, and the people who are who who are manipulating the system know that. Mm. They are using funny money to get real assets, and mm -hmm. then convincing all of the rest of us that we should be getting money. <laughs> <laughs> Understand? Uh, yeah, yeah. Really it's, it's, it's it's the the most colossal thing. Well, someone asked about inherited money. Well, if if the people that, you know, you, well, well, here's an interesting thing. People who inherit money often lose it. Uh -huh. it. I mean, kids who grow up in wealthy families where their parents give them everything and they don't make them work. They end up losing it. They end up losing it uh -huh. because they don't know how to make money. They just know how to spend it. Yeah. Okay, money, yeah. money, money has to be put to good use. Money is just a tool to exchange goods and services. And if you don't understand that mm -hmm. and you love money and you think money is the answer, you're falling into a delusion, into a trap. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And uh, thank you very much for all that, uh, Stephen. We really appreciate you sharing with us. And uh, if you just found us in the middle, we are talking about Let Freedom Ring by Stephen Horn. And we've come to the end of this episode. We've shared quite much. You can always go back to the beginning and listen to what we've shared. And uh, to get the book, we you can search for it on Amazon or Barnes & Noble, or you can connect with uh, Stephen on his website www.stephenhorn.com and uh, get to know much more, get to exchange these conversations with him because they are important in our life. So that's about it for us today. But before we go, we always like the author or our guest to leave us with a few words that we will always remember. Which are your words, Stephen? Oh my God. My, my word is this. The, the law of the harvest is real. What you sow, you will reap. And if you understand that, that you've got to put out good into the world to get good back from the world, 
that is one of the keys to understanding how life actually operates. And, uh, and you can't cheat it. It's just like gravity. You can't cheat it. You may think you're going to cheat it, but in the long run, it will, it will take, you, it'll come out of your hide. And so uh, read Emerson's essay on compensation. In fact, read it a dozen times till you really grasp that and it'll make a big difference in your life. Mm. Thank you very much. To you who's listening, to you who's watching, remember the law of the harvest. Always, so said Stephen Holm. And that's about it for now. I've been your host, Anthony Morore. And together with Stephen Horn, we are saying bye for now. Yep. Bye. Bye.